Hey everyone, welcome to Ian and Friends Giro Italia Edition. I am Flow Bike Senior Editor Ian Dilly. And I am Michael Sheehan, Ian's friend. Today we saw the highly anticipated Stage 6 up to Mount Etna. Summit finish. And the GC was shaken, but first we're going to start with how hard it was to make this freaking breakaway in this race today. Yeah, and this is something that's really cool. Uh, we're seeing the Grand Tour. Um, people who are actually boots on the ground filming the stages, they're getting the cameras rolling from the, uh, from Kilom the yeah, from kilometer zero. Yeah. And it was a grippy start to the day. Uh, it took about 40 kilometers for the breakaway to actually get established. And what that means is it is so hard in the pack, just attacks flying left and right. You know, most, if a breakaway goes within the first five kilometers, everybody's kind of on the same page. Uh, not a lot of people are gonna be in the break, easy start. When it takes 40 kilometers, it is so hard for these riders. Uh, yeah, what do we see? Um, yeah, so it was a super fast 40 kilometers. Uh, Peloton was completely strung out. Every time it looked like a breakaway was established, a team would go to the front and bring it back. And then finally, a group of 20, 27 riders got clear. And I think because it was so hard to make this breakaway, because the racing was so hard, we saw some incredibly strong riders in this breakaway. Esteban Chavez and Jack Haig from Mitchelton Scott. Chad Haga and Sam Omen from Sunweb, um, Robert Gasing from Lotto Jumble, Ben Hermans from the Israel Cycling Academy, and Sky had uh, De La Cruz and Hinao in there. I mean, it was a stacked breakaway, a bunch of hitters. Yeah, a lot of threats up the road, and it, it got to a point, you know, when there are 27 riders going clear and the pack just is worn out, they can't chase anymore, it, it comes to a point where they just have to cut their losses and say, okay, no more attacks. Like, we are gassed, we cannot keep going on like this. Uh, a few teams are just gonna have to ride Tempo who missed out on the break. And BMC, of course, missed because they're protecting Ron Dennis. Hard day for BMC. Astana was also a big loser. They did not put anyone up there and it really came down to Astana leading the charge up to Mount Etna. Yeah, no, actually, uh, BMC did have one rider in the breakaway. They had DeMarkey. Oh, that's at, right. Uh, at, which was weird, he was sort of like, the token guy in the breakaway. I don't know why he was even up there, right? Because like, he actually should be back helping pull. And then the funny thing too was he was doing like a soft roll on the front of this 27 rider breakaway. So like, when you're in a 27 rider breakaway, there's maybe what, like seven guys actually pulling? Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of guys just getting a free ride? Yeah, you, you know, so there is some strategy that goes into that with BMC. They could. If there's a giant move like that, they are gonna want someone up the road to kind of keep everything in check and keep an eye on the favorites like Chavez who snuck in there. But also, he could have potentially been sent back at the start of the climb as fresh legs to help BMC. That didn't happen, DeMarkey actually attacked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I don't know, he was up there. <laughs> he was doing a thing. Well, maybe it gets to the point too that I don't think they were necessarily all in for Rohan Dennis today. I think they were sort of like, yeah, we'll see how he does on the climb. And it was a big test for him. Yeah. And he did admirably. He got popped with about 3K to go. Uh, and like we mentioned yesterday, 5K to go, just really, really steep kicker. That's where we saw Chavez attack today. And that's where the final kind of like the last few people who are going to get dropped got the, dropped there. So Rowan Dennis lost some time, but he had a really good ride. Yeah, and what, actually the way he got dropped, we were looking at the video of this, it actually sort of gets to that strategy of sending riders up the road because Lotto had uh, Gesink up the road, mm -hmm. and he, when he came back, they were already well into the climb. He gets caught by the field. Sam Bennett is, um, or George Bennett, George, excuse yeah. me, is... Um, leading up the climb he's riding incredibly well guess it gets in front of bennett and just yanks it brings the entire rest of the breakaway back and punches rohan uh off the back of the lead group so yeah that was actually a really clutch move by guessing because uh guessing that was a suicidal move for him he came back from the breakaway drove it for george bennett and really he took like 20 seconds out of the gap uh, up the road to Chavez. Yeah. So yeah, that was huge. Um, but yeah, let's get into the the final moves. We yeah. saw, you know, Astana had been driving it all day, obviously mm -hmm. trying to set up Lopez for the 
for the win after they left him hanging after his crash yesterday. <laughs> I don't know if it was makeup. Hey, we're going to drive it for you to win today. Um, and, you know, he, he looked good. He laid down an attack with was between 2 and 3K to go, and it mm -hmm. was a solid attack. Uh, Posa Vivo was right on top of it. And then everybody sort of fans out. Yates pulls to the side and just launches. Yeah, and that was a risky move uh, when I was watching it because when he had Chavez up the road solo, looking like he had the stage win in the bag, and if you have a teammate who's going to attack up to a solo rider that close to the finish, you are running a really big risk of dragging competition with him. And Yates, I think he just was really aware of the fact that all the favorites around him were tired. He had gotten a free ride all the way up to that point and obviously felt really good. And he just punched. Uh, we saw Thibaut Pino try to go with him and just couldn't. Yeah. So that's, you know, Thibaut Pino is another really punchy kind of climber. If Pino can't go with Yates, Yates had a lot in the engine room. Yeah, when, happen. when he went, he was shot out of a cannon and, and went right across to Chavez. And it's it's not like Chavez was fading because let's remember that Chavez dropped Haneo, um, he dropped uh, Chichone from uh, Barani, who had been riding incredibly. Yeah. Um, so he was he was definitely on a stellar day, and Yates came across to him. When he caught him, I was like, is he going to go straight around his own teammate? Because he was going that much faster, but the two of them linked up, rode into the finish, and then it was really interesting um, that Yates let Chavez have the win. He dragged him, you know, all the way to the line and then slowed down. I mean, super incredible teammate move. I mean, obviously it was Chavez's race to win. He had been in the break all day, mm -hmm. um, put himself out there going for the win, and so it would have been a pretty pretty crappy move uh, of Yates to to come around him and take the win but let's not forget there were time bonuses on the line. Yeah that is that's a tough call and I think that Yates definitely made the right decision to let Chavez take it from a optics standpoint because Chavez had been up there the whole time also just as far as keeping a sense of cohesion in the team you know it, it's the right thing to do to let your teammate do it but if Yates is going to try to win this overall the second city just gave up they can come into play in any number of ways in the yeah. next two weeks so it's a risk yeah. and that kind of shows that Mitchelton Scott they don't know who is going to be the team leader in week three yeah and I mean that's one of those things uh that could create some some tension in the team I mean um obviously Yates is on insane form you know Chavez struggled last year he's just coming back into form but let's not forget he almost won the Giro two years ago, so um, that's going to be you know tough for Mitchelton Scott to you know use that either as a positive, having two riders who are both so strong, um, or or make it a potential negative where they're running into situations like this where they're battling each other for the overall win. Yeah, that's it's going to be an interesting battle <laughs> to see it unfold. Uh, so now they're friends they rode across the line hugging it was a really really cool picture for yeah. Mitchelton Scott uh, whether or not one of them is going to have to kind of fall on his sword for the other one you know we'll see talking about Mitchelton Scott though we just have to give massive kudos to Jack Haig yeah. who has just been at the pointy end of the race really this entire first week uh, setting up Chavez to charge up uh, some of the shorter hilltop finishes. He's just been a consummate teammate and he made the break with Chavez today and just drilled it as long as he could from the base of Mount Etna. Yeah, I mean this whole year he's been on stellar form. Uh, he was in the break at Flesh Vallone, was one of the last riders to get caught, so it's not surprising to see him riding this well uh, in the Giro and you know, I think uh, Yates and Chavez uh, and the whole team owes him a lot, you know, for just being a consummate teammate. Yeah, so hats off to the whole Mitchelton Scott program. They came here to win the race and they are doing a good job of it right now. Yeah, and I did want to call out, uh, you know, Richard Carapaz, also of Movistar. I wasn't super impressed with the lineup that Movistar brought to the Giro. I, you know, obviously they have. Uh, Landa, Valverde, and Quintana, who they're saving for the tour, and um, you know Carapaz is 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 looking well in the overall. And um, you know this is a rider that was flying a little bit under the radar. 11th at Paris Nice, third at Coppi Bartali, which is 
Um, I think it was a UCI 1.HC. We actually had it on Flow Bikes. You can look for it in our archives. But uh, this is a, a young rider from Ecuador that's uh, might do things over the course of the Giro. Hot tip for me and Dilly. There we go. All right, what do we have on tap for tomorrow? Tomorrow, things are going to calm down a little bit. We have a sprint stage. Uh, they are traveling to Italy's mainland right now, and pretty, pretty flat, no drama stage. I think that we're going to see a lot less excitement at the start going for the breakaway. Um, and yeah, for all intents and purposes, we're looking at a sprint. Yeah. Um, who's your pick? Sam Bennett. Really? Uh, I'm waiting for him. Yeah, he, he, he's going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> can, uh, can Viviani lose a stage? I mean, I think that's sort of the question. At this point, it's going to be more surprising if he loses a stage than, than if he wins one. So, yeah. so you're thinking Viviani? I'm thinking Viviani. Yeah. All right. The safe bet. <laughs> the safe bet. Fair enough. All right. Well, we will see everybody tomorrow after the finish of stage seven. And don't forget to send us your coffee mugs. We'll have our address in the show notes. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.